It's another day and it's another tutorial. Welcome to Learn Brizzy Page Builder with JP. And we are slowly getting closer to the release of the Pro version and playing around with the free one is quite exciting. You know, it, it's something that I've been doing. It's a little bit of a dementia almost. The fact that, you know, there is something new to play with. And I think that's what a lot of the hype is about at the moment about Brizzy. It isn't only a very promising page builder, but it is new. And we can see it taking on the giants, and that's very exciting. There's still a lot of things that need to come into this page builder. And I hope that at a minimum, they can equal their rivals. And at a maximum, they can give us features and uh, options and styling and workflow arrangements and, you know, just all those things that we constantly nag for in page builders if they can improve on that or give us a little bit more. Of course, the one thing that looks very promising in the pro version is the fact that the developers of Breezy are the same guys who developed the themes for Theme Fuse, which I've mentioned earlier. And that means you are going to get, you should get better integration between the page builder and those themes. And I believe some of those themes will be included in the pro. So currently it looks like we are two months away from the release of pro. And until then we are playing around with this free version of Brizzy, which in my opinion, I call a demo version for those people who want to know whether this is going to be something worthwhile investing in. This is a demo that you can play with and see what it can do. I believe and I trust that we are going to see a lot, lot more in the future. And for that, I also want to thank everyone who has been giving some feedback and comments. It's really, really helpful. I, I like the way that people are working together, trying to help each other, reporting bugs and reporting ideas to the developers. And this is how you build a great product. It's also a good way to keep people motivated who are developing this program when they see a community work so closely together and the support. Of course, the support already from my side has been in purchasing the lifetime early bird special. And that is only going to be available, I think, until Pro is released. So you better grab that while you can. Let's return to today's tutorial and let's start building a block or deconstructing a block and building our own. We're going to look at the typical block that you find almost on every website nowadays, and that is the team or us or our members, this kind of block that you will see. This is very typical. I mean, I almost cannot open a website today without this kind of block or section existing there. And strangely enough, I'm always interested, how can it always only be three people on a team? <laughs> anyway, yes, I do see that on so many websites, there's always just three. It's like it is limited. We're not going to add any more content. We don't want to make it too long at the bottom. So we choose three lucky ducks and we put them on our team page. This is very typical. Um, like I said, you, you, should, you should try and do your own thing and present your team in a way that is unique to the style of your uh, community or your organization. But if all else fails, then you revert back to this kind of layout and there's nothing wrong with it. Let's begin duplicating or copying it. And we first have to add a blank block and I'm going to delete the default over here. Next, I want to match the color of these two blocks because this one in our columns, we have a white background, which means we need to let the white contrast with this background. This is not a pure white. We go to colors and we copy that hex code, go to our block settings, ah, colors, and then paste it there. We've matched it looking good. Next, we bring in our heading, which is a text element. Let's just scroll up a little bit. And then we say, meet our, our team. And this is definitely a heading one. It is the second swatch. And then for the settings, there is a H1 HTML tag. And under more settings, the margin at the bottom has been reduced to zero. 
Why I say reduced? Because whenever you drag in a text element, the default margin is 10, 0, 10, 0. The reason why they would have reduced this to 0 is because they are trying to bring these two text elements closer to each other. And we'll do the same. Click on our text element, heading 1. Give it that swatch, align it to the middle, go to settings, put it on H1, which in my case, I'll probably put it on H2, and then reduce this to zero. Good. Next is another text element for our subtitle. Meet oh, some random guys from Unsplash. I did look for these random guys from Unsplash. I couldn't find them, so I just got my own posse together, which we will be displaying soon. And let's do the same. Wait, let's first look at what they've done here. It's a subtitle, the blue third from the left, center aligned again, plus they made it italics. And then, of course, they reduced the top margin to zero to bring these two text elements closer to each other. Let's do the same. And what did they say? Some random guys from Unsplash. We're going to call them some random guys off the street. Yes, my posse. And then we are going to give them that subtitle. We're going to make them blue, center line, italics, and then to more settings, change the top margin to zero. Perfecto. Next is a spacer. Let's drag it in, Mr. Spacer. One thing that I also would like is if I grab the spacer and I drag it down, I wish that the the whole spite, uh, uh, site can scroll down, which is not happening. So you need to scroll to the place at least where you want to drag it into, into view, and then you can place your element. And this one is 35. That is what the top spacer is. Let's get to the meat of the section. Three columns. So we begin with our three columns, drag in our columns. Again, I have to scroll down. Columns over here. We have two, duplicate, make a third one. If we look at the first column, you can see that there is a white background. And that's not an image. That is the background of the column. And the reason we know that is there's no frame around it. So it is part of the blue column. And the fact that there is this spacing between the white and the frame tells us there are margins applied. So let's go have a look at what they've done for this. Settings and more settings. The margin definitely, there you go, 15 pixels. If we reduce this to zero, you will see that the background will automatically fill the whole frame. So for design purposes, they've put it on 15, we'll also put it on 15. And then for the padding, up here, you will see a lot of padding applied, and that is to bring the content, which are these elements with the frames around and the distance they are from the frame. And this is 50, 45, 50, 45. So let's go apply that to our column. And let's do this first before I forget these numbers. 50, tab, tab, 45, tab, tab. 50, tap, tap, 45. And then for our margins, 15. Great. Of course, nothing has happened yet here because we don't have a background, so nothing to compare it to. Let's go put in that white background. Click on the column. Go to Colors. And then choose the white. It applies the white. And you may be confused. Why doesn't it have that little gap that we get up here? And the reason for that is that a row or a column is not a displayable element. It is purely a container. And to prove it to you, we are going to the bottom of the page on the right and click on the preview button. This will open a new page here for us and it will show us how this page will display if it were live. Now the top one is of course the Brizzy block and at the bottom, is ours. And you can see there is nothing here. If you go back, you will see we have our columns here. We have a white background. But coming back here, you don't see it. In fact, you do see it. It is there. It's very, 
it's very faint there at the bottom. I'm just magnifying it here. You will see a very faint, faint white line over here. And that is this white background that you see on the page that we are working with. The only time you are going to see those stylings applied is once you drag content into the column. So let's do that by dragging in the image. Go to Add Elements, grab our image and drag it in. And we're going to load image. Remember, I said I've already chosen my group of people, my team. And the first one is Bob Sinclair. I have no idea what his name is. I also got him from Unsplash. Today he is Bob Sinclair. And to prove to you what happens once you drag in a element is you see that now we have that styling applied. And if we click on the preview, it should show us Bob Sinclair as it is displayed on our working page. And the loading is taking forever. Good. Yes, there is good old Bob. Let's go get Bob looking like this icon up here. If you click on it and you click on settings, you will see it's at 36%, 100% at 48 pixels. Let's do the same. Click in 36%, 100%, and then here, increase to, huh? And it doesn't want to go up to 48. Right, and this is where your image size will differ from the one at the top. Currently, Brizzy does not give you a default circle image setting like you get in many other themes and page builders. So you have to manhandle this image a little bit. My advice is the following. And I figured this out after playing with it for a very long time. Click on the image and you will see you get six drag handles. Grab the bottom one and drag it out as far as you can. And I'll explain to you why I did that. Now you go back to settings and you will see that the amount with which you can increase your corner radius has extended. Now you can increase it and there we get the 49. Now what you need to do is you need to reduce your height. You can reduce it with this slider up here if you want to. But just notice the moment you go under 143%, your corner pixels start reducing. And the moment that happens, you are now losing your one-to-one -one ratio. So you need to reduce, reduce, reduce until you get to the moment you start losing a pixel here, then take it up again and you get the 49 pixels and that means you've got a circle here. Yes, that is not a perfect workaround, but that is good enough. I actually like dragging even to manually to see how it looks. Of course, this is going to give me sleepless nights because I like things to be perfect, but alas, this is what I have to do in this case. Let's just align Bob a little bit. Click on the image and we grab this little blue dot and we can move him around. Sexy. Good. Bob, you're the man. Let's continue. Next will be his name. And we're going to grab a text element for that. And he is Bob Sinclair II. Yes, I forgot to tell you that. It is a heading five, and it is the second swatch from the left. Heading five, second swatch, and of course, center align. Good. Very, very nice. And then the next thing we're going to do is give Bob some description. And I'm not going to divulge too much about Bob because he's got a tainted history. So we're just going to leave it with the default text. And under the default text, you will find a little spacer. Let's drag in that spacer. I have to scroll down first. Grab the spacer, drag it in. What is the setting for this spacer? 30 pixels. And then we do the same. And now you may think, let's go look for our social sharing element. And you're not going to find it. It's not there because it isn't a social element or a social sharing element. These are icons. Yes, click on the Facebook icon and you will see 
this little sign tells you it's an icon. For the Twitter, same. Pinterest, the same. How did they do this? How did they get three icons to be adjacent to each other? And that is a very interesting feature also of Brizzy. Let's drag in the icon element. And let's style this one first, accordingly to the Facebook. So you're going to go to your icon and you'll grab the Facebook one and you'll make it 20 pixels and 10. And the color, they've already given us the Facebook color. So let's do the same. Icon, click on icon. And from here, you can just type in Facebook. And they used this one. And then we are going to reduce it to 20. And the color is the one they gave us, which I'm going to paste. Good. What now? And what now is you click on that and you duplicate it. And watch what happens. Yes, it duplicates it in the same line. It is Strictly speaking, still a separate element, but for this moment, it is still in the same container. So for this one, all we need is the icon and the color. I'm going to copy the hex, and then we're going in and find Twitter. There we go. And we're going to change the color. Awesome. Let's duplicate it. We do the same with Pinterest. Oh, okay, we don't need that. We just need the color. I'm not going to change the hover color as well. You can change that. At this moment, I think the hover colors are the same as the front colors. And let's first change the icon. And then let's change the color. Excellent. Ah, let's go and change everything so it is perfect. Copy this, go to hover, and then icon, do the same. Let's do the same for this one. Copy the color, go to hover, paste it. So the hover seems for the icon to be applied automatically. And if you change the initial state color, you have to go and change the hover state color as well. If you want them to be the same, they are not linked by default. Go to hover. Okay, let's see. Yes, magnificent. Great. That's perfect. It's an exact copy, except this is my team, some random guys off the street. This is their team, some random guys from Unsplash. Let's copy this now. So we're going to delete. We're going to delete and copy, copy. Good. And I'm only going to change the images. And I am very, very much focused on the fact that we get a nice team here together. And what is an office without a cat? O'Malley the cat. There we go. Excellent. And that's how we have deconstructed their team block and created our own team block. I would love to see a lot of work being done on what we can do with images, maybe some aspect ratios that we can paste them in, as well as settings for applying a circle automatically to it, or if they can bring in a element like this in the future that is a personnel or a blurb that you can add these features in automatically. But it can be done. And that, my friends, is our tutorial for today.